This distribution has the number four slot on DistroWatch, and for good reason. I'm looking at Magia version 4, the KDE version, right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. For starters, I gotta say Magia 4 has the coolest looking welcome screen I've seen on any distribution. Let's have a look at what you get here. All right, so basically, you know, you have uh, quick launches to documentation support and community. And then, of course, little quick uh, launches here to their welcome page, the control center, configuring media sources, or uh, install and remove software. Or you can navigate these using the arrow. So you got the control center here, gives you an explanation of what it is and a shortcut to launch it. We'll get to that in a moment. You also get, uh, you can also manage and configure your media sources right here. And of course, uh, you can install and remove software. Also in this is the applications tab. When you click on this thing, it'll tell you some information about the different types of uh packages that are available, such as uh, audio multimedia codecs. It tells you this is a tainted package. That means it's using non-free codecs and that sort of thing. All right, so you'll see that there's audio and video codecs available. And then, of course, there's also non-free software. Great to warn you people. So for those of you who, uh, who you know, want to just be free and open source only, this lets you know that you shouldn't install this stuff, eh? So pretty good stuff indeed, and these are just the featured applications. Just a small listing of some of the games, uh, internet tools that you can get for this, video, audio, graphics, system, and programming tools. Really, really cool uh, startup screen though. So I'd like to see something like this on more distributions. Awesome stuff indeed. You have the ability to add widgets to your desktop by clicking this icon here. You can also click that same icon uh, on the edge of your panel, which will allow you to uh, add any kind of widgets and that sort of thing with a power control, lock screen. You also have a calendar with which to manage your appointments and everything right here. You have your uh, typical uh, USB or uh, drive connections, a volume control, a clipboard manager, and of course, you can also manage network connectivity here. You have some quick launches to some useful things on your panel. For instance, a quick launch to the Firefox web browser. You also get a quick launch to the Magia Control Center. Let's have a look at that. Okay, it'll ask for your password. And then it'll load up quickly. And you know, that's a neat thing about this because the testing environment I'm running is a dual core 1.5 gigahertz virtual appliance. And look how fast and snappy KDE is running on this. And you'll see that there's a glow around the borders. That is using a KWIN compositing. So even with the compositing and everything, this is just behaving so quickly. I was completely blown away by this last night when I was testing this. Let's go ahead and also open up your uh, KDE system settings because I'm going to go into some things with you here as well. But at any rate, uh, your Magia Control Center allows you to do pretty much most of the things you'll want to do on your system. You can easily add or remove software, update your system, configure media, that sort of thing. You can manage all of your hardware. And the really cool thing about this is it also has Compass support. So if you were to click on the Configure 3D Effects, it'll take a moment to load up. And then you can tell it to uh, run Compass Fusion. If you press OK, it will let you know that it's going to need to download some packages to get that working. I didn't test that out. I didn't feel the need to. But I thought that was a nice little feature that they bundled in with this. You also have the ability to manage a number of other peripherals on your system, manage your network and internet preferences, your system settings, your network sharing, local disks, security, and boot. And of course, in your system settings here, this is where you'll manage everything indigenous to the KDE desktop, such as uh, your account details, application appearance. If you don't like this light colored look, it's very, very easy to change. 
just by simply uh, opening this up, you can, you know, uh, choose uh, one of these widgets here to, you know, change the appearance of uh, the windows themselves. We'll go back to oxygen because that happens to be my favorite one. You know, you can go into the colors here. I'm going to discard those changes. And maybe I want to uh, pick something that'll maybe a little bit more closely resemble the uh, desktop here. Let's try the wonton soup one. We'll go ahead and apply that. And zip, bada, boom, that's a nice look. You know, and it's already applied to the menu as well. And I like the menu layout for this too, by the way. I thought that's very nice. So, I mean, there are plenty of options here that you can use to customize this and make it your own. And, I mean, the possibilities are endless on a KDE desktop. Let's go ahead and close this. And I imagine right after uh, right after logging out and logging back in, those same uh, changes would be applied to your panel as well. You have four desktops with which to switch from here. And this also uses the Dolphin File Manager, which I happen to use on my XFCE desktop. It is really cool because you can customize this to your liking. You can, you know, change the way the icons appear. You can have them as large or as small as you want them. Uh, you know, you can decide how you want the panels to lay out. If you want to have previews, you can, you know, you can change the look and that sort of thing. So that's kind of cool too. There's a preview mode and a and then there's also a split mode for management of applications and that sort of thing. So if you want to transfer files around, that's always a nice thing as well. This button will allow you to add more widgets, of course. This will allow you to collapse all windows and show your desktop. And uh, let's have a quick run and see what you get with this. Now, uh, this comes with all of the applications that one would come to expect with a KDE desktop. And this is a comprehensive uh, desktop in its own right. So, you know, for most people, this will include most applications that the everyday average user would need. You get Blue Devil for managing your Bluetooth. Firefox, you get a KDE IM contact. So if you use instant messaging, you could manage all of this there. You also get Conquer, which is another web browser, and you get the Network Center included with this. The full LibreOffice suite comes included so that you can edit your documents along with Ocular, which is an excellent document viewer. In graphics, you get uh, the GIMP most notably, uh, but there are other applications included with this where you can acquire images from your scanner. You get one view case snapshot with this. And sound and video, Amarok is a great multimedia mu and music manager. You also get Dragon Player. K-Mix for uh, mixing your audio, Pulse Audio Volume Control, and one of my personal favorites, TV Time. Great for those of you with Hop Hog uh, USB dongles that you plug in, allow you to uh, hook up cable television, and uh, they work magnificently with TV Time. All you just do is plug it in and then uh, set it up. It'll even access your webcam too, which is really good stuff. All right, under tools, uh, your usual complement of uh, system tools come preloaded with this. You get ARC for managing any archives, so if somebody sends you a zip or a RAR file, you'll be able to open it with this. Uh, you get KCALC, uh, character selection tool, uh, Clipper, which is your clipboard manager, console for the terminal, KWrite, which is just a simple text editor and uh, a number of other system tools uh, come preloaded with this. We've already looked at the Magia Control Center in the uh, system settings, but this also comes with Apper. So if you want to install, have a lighter weight application, you can use this. This comes with K3B, which is great for disk burning, and I personally believe that this is the best of the best disk burning utilities av available on the Linux uh, desktop. So awesome stuff in indeed. This is k -Syscard. and this is telling me right now that this is using uh, about 440 megs of RAM, where a typical KDE desktop could use 550 megs of RAM. So this is awesome. And I'm a firm believer that this operating system would actually run quite well on any computer that was designed to run on Windows Vista. In documentation, they have the Magia MCC user manual in English available to you, which will open up Firefox web browser. And everything you could possibly want to know about this operating system is covered here. 
Let's have a look at the Add Remove Software dialog here. And it does take a moment to search the database and find all available packages. The main package manager that Magia ships with is RPM Drake, and I really like the way this is laid out. You have everything organized by categories here. So you can just simply click on a category, and then you can highlight an application, and then beneath it, it'll give you the details of the application. You can also use this drop down here where it can show you some different things, such as maybe you want to see all of the updates that are available. It says the list of updates is empty. Okay, no problem. You can also choose meta packages, and basically what meta packages are, uh, it is a set that contains a number of other packages. So when you install a meta package, it will install all of the packages within that particular set. So as an example here, let's say, let's look in the graphics here. Looks like there's a task scanning meta package. So all the packages that are required to get this to work will be installed with this, basically. So you can choose between meta packages, packages with a graphical user interface, all updates, security updates, bug fix updates, general updates, and then, of course, items that are backported. So you can show all what is installed or what is not installed. Pretty neat indeed. If you don't like the classic menu style that this ships with, you can right click on this panel and then switch to application launcher style. Uh, this can make it helpful for you if you are uh, wanting to search for an application rather than navigating through all the menus. So by hitting the search field here, now I can search for a terminal, for instance. I can open that up and uh, let's ask this what kernel it's using. And it's telling me that it's using Linux kernel 3.12.8. So this is a nice up-to-date system. And the nice thing about Magia, it comes in more flavors than just KDE. There's also a GNOME and XFCE edition available to you. There'll be a link in the show notes where you can go and download this distribution and try it out. And interestingly enough, for those of you who want to test before you install, this is perfectly VirtualBox friendly. I didn't even have to install any guest editions into this, so kudos to the team for thinking about that because that's the way many people like to test their distributions. So at the end of the day, I really like what I see here. It has a well-deserved number four slot on DistroWatch, and this is a good distribution that beginners can try out. I chose the, to look at the KDE version because this would give an air of familiarity that the average Windows user that would be coming over to Linux might actually enjoy. Well, that's all I have on this. As a reminder, please consider supporting the show hosts who are bringing you the content you enjoy the most by disabling your ad blockers or shouting some coins. Peace out!